All right, guys, so let's go into CVA versus TIA and exactly what these two things are. So just like I've been telling you guys, pretty much um, for any diagnosis in the entire body, you have to remember that the body runs on oxygen. So only oxygen. So let's just say that um, there's a decrease in oxygen or a stop in blood flow in your heart. That's what's called a heart attack, right? Uh, let's just say that there's a stop in blood flow in your leg or in your um, extremities. That's what's called a DVT or a clot that's stopped the blood flow. Let's just say now that clot is in your brain. That's what's called a CVA. Does that make sense? Now there's two different types of CVAs. The CVA is just a cerebral vascular accident. Fancy words for heart attack of the brain. And people sometimes call it brain attack. So um, there's a whole bunch of neuro deficits that happen if there's not enough oxygen to your brain. Um, on the other side of things, what is a TIA? Well, a TIA is a transient ischemic attack. Fancy words for the blood vessels in your brain are becoming very narrow, causing a decrease in oxygen. So, ischemic just means decreased oxygen. So, whether you're looking at an EKG that shows ischemia from ST depression, Ischemia just means low oxygen. So whenever there's low oxygen, that's why I always stress to you guys, O2 is the money of the body. Without O2, your body does not function. So your body needs oxygen. So, CBA means, or sorry, uh, TIA means low O2. Okay, CBA means no O2, cool? So, same thing almost as in your heart. We just call it different things. In the heart, a CBA or a um, MI is the same thing. We have a clot in the major pathways of our heart. In the CBA, it's in your brain. Now, for acute coronary syndrome or angina of the heart, <laughs> um, same thing as low oxygen in your brain. It's a TIA, transient ischemic attack. So what is the plan of care for a nurse with a CVA versus a TIA? So let's go into it right now. So when anyone comes into the hospital complaining of weakness on any side of their body. Basically meaning huge alerts for, oh my gosh, this patient is having a stroke or a CVA, okay? Now, a stroke, and I, and I hate the way the medical field tries to complicate things with all these words, but really, a stroke and CVA a brain attack, same thing. Just means we have a clot in your brain. So in your, in the vessels of your brain, you have a clot right here. Now the clot is stopping oxygen. Now just like fat kids on a uh, on a uh, water slide, if if a kid gets stuck in the water slide itself, he's backing up the water slide. So, all this pressure now is being pushed on your vessel itself. Now, if your vessel gives out and it bursts, that's what's called an aneurysm, and you're going to experience more signs and symptoms with your patient. So, don't forget that your brain uh, monitors and controls your movement and your muscles especially with your motor muscles. So that's why the first, the very, very first thing that we see with CVA patients is weakness. 
um, weakening on one side, something we call hemipoesis. Also, you get aphasia, which is just um, an impairment in speaking. So, you'll see a patient like this, talking. If they had a stroke on this side, it's going to affect their entire other side of the body. So just remember about right at the nose, right here, if you have a stroke on either side of your body, I'm sorry, either side of your brain, it's going to affect the opposite side of your body. Hopefully that makes sense a little bit. It's going to affect your face, your affect, and your smile, and also your motor senses here. So something we like to call a stroke, we like to call fast. Um, something that the uh, that the um, the Stroke Foundation has come up with something called FAST. And FAST stands for looking for the face. Tell your patient to smile. If they're like this, then we know that this patient is um, having some. Um, hemipoesis, just a weakening on one side. Hemi meaning half, um, poesis, that side of the weakness, okay? Um, you're going to have unilateral neglect. Basically, your body's going to neglect one side. Your brain is going to neglect one side of the body. So we look at the face first, then we look at the affect of the face. So we tell your patient to smile, and if your patient is like this, oops, sorry, <laughs> and there's one side, then that's another consideration that we go into for your patients probably having a stroke. Um, then we go into um, grips or sen um, having your patient raise their arm, and if one arm goes down, we actually we actually have them close their eyes. If one arm goes down then we're considering this side of the brain has possibly had a stroke. And one of the last things that we do is um, tell your patient to smile, and uh, I'm sorry, not smile, but talk, say a word, say a phrase. And uh, if they can't say this or if their speech is all jumbled, um, that's a huge indication of a stroke as well. These are signs and symptoms of initial stroke. Now, what do we do as nurses? Um, and how is it different in each one? Well, if a patient comes to the emergency room with these symptoms of uh, hemipoesis, that weakening of one side, or aphasia, um, not being able to, um, to speak in full sentences and having that sided weakness, we're going to go directly to the uh, CAT scan room. We're going to get a CAT scan, and CAT scan is a fancy word for x-ray of the brain. We want to see if there's a clot or if there's just a narrowing in the blood vessel, okay? Because we don't know. All the signs and symptoms are pretty much the same. So that's why we go to the um, x-ray room get a quick snapshot, get a quick picture to kind of see what the heck is going on in the brain. Is it low O2 or is it no O2? Um, so that's the pretty much difference in the major signs and symptoms. Now what is the plan of care and what are the implications of CVA versus TIA? These are way different. So let's go into that in this next little video here.